He may be one of those candidates that really creates uh, a lot of attention on a statewide basis. Kind of a funny start to the show, I have to admit. That's what uh, Taping Live is all about. You know what it is? My back is killing me. If, if I... Uh, did you ever use one of these? Uh, like 25 bucks on Amazon.com. The stick.com. Yeah, just, just you, you use it for your legs, right? I usually, my, but today I got I got bumped, and I don't even tell you. I'm not even telling you the story, but I think it's affected my brain. So if I start rubbing this thing out, <laughs> Kev always laughs at me. Just uh, never laughs at me. But Kev always laughs at me. But if I start rubbing this out, just no, it's I'm okay. Anyway, I recommend this, by the way, for those of you who run. You know, you run, you rub your legs and your shoulders if you lift. It, it works. Anyway, that's a no charge endorsement. Uh, welcome in. Obviously, my state of mind is harried this evening. Uh, Dawson Hodgson is my guest, and my point was that he's running for attorney general. He's a Republican. I think he's going to make a heck of a race out of this with incumbent Peter Kim Martin. He's been no stranger to the broadcast, but now we are in the election season sprint. Uh, we'll see if Mr. Kim Martin shows up here. Hmm, that'd be a tough conversation for him. But let's go to the rundown. It's been a tough show for me already. Uh, really? I mean, one headline, two headlines, three headlines. The conversation about Buddy CNC and who's the favorite and who's the underdog, I think, are kind of interesting after we take a look at the polling data that was released yesterday. And then in that polling data is this concern about conviction, meaning his convictions. And... Uh, got some thoughts on that. And then the president, uh, what, really, Mr. President? And then can we end this? That may be outdated, by the way, based on the idea that we record this program in late afternoon and the Yankees had an early game today, but I'm exhausted already. I'll tell you why. All right. Who is the underdog? Uh, oh, that's the second one. See, I told you, this back in my brain, I don't know. Headline, headline, headline. And we've got like three of them. Here's the first one. When I saw this in the paper today, I went, holy cow. Remember what I was telling you about all this focus on Cianci? I mean, that is a huge headline. And the Providence Journal and the and, and WPRI Channel 12, uh, which owns this broadcast, of course, uh, have, you know, teamed up on the poll, which is great. But that's a heck of a big headline, don't you think? Uh, second one. Well... They've got this, uh, you know, conviction concern, some under data, if you will. So there's a second headline for him today in the paper. And then there's this one. This lawsuit heard by the state Supreme Court over two firefighters who were upset that uh, then Buddy CNC, the mayor, sent them to the gay pride parade and made them drive the truck on their shift. And they were thinking that was totally offensive. And then a fourth one, the editorial, CNC's half-truths. At this point... It really doesn't matter. And you know what we didn't put in? I think there was at least one letter to the editor today in the Providence Journal talking about Buddy Cianci. There were five major or mini Cianci headlines in the Providence Journal today. Five. Now, that buoys the idea that I've told you that this is a Cianci-centric election. Uh, a guy calls my show today. He says, uh, yeah, this is, you know, it's about Cianci. And, uh, and I said, and... What do you think about the, the other candidate? He goes, yeah, the other guy, who is he? Well, he's not that far off. Let's take a look at uh, the next concept here and who is the underdog. We rolled these at you last night, but let me take a look at them again one more time. The polling data shows that Buddy cianci has got a near six-point lead over Jorge Alorza, the Democratic primary winner, and Dan Harrop, who I, I, I'm convinced will trade that 6%. He'll trade it. He says he's going to stay in the race all the way to the end. I don't buy it. Uh, and then 21% undecided. So as looking at that big headline, here are the concepts put together now uh, that I think my back's a little looser. With a headline that big, I couldn't figure out how to look at CNC's candidacy now. Is he the favorite? I was reading an interesting email from a viewer listener earlier today who pointed to a Bob Healy post on his, you know, the guy who's running for governor now, on his website talking about third-party candidacies and polling data for the undecided, that undecided voters generally move to the underdog at the end. I'm trying to figure out who the underdog is. 
you think Jorge Lorza now in second place would be the underdog. But Cianci is a comeback story, and the comeback story is always about the underdog, right? So when you figure out who the underdog is, can you give me a ring or an email or a tweet or a Facebook post? And we'll include it on Dan York State of Mind's Your State of Mind coming up at the end of the broadcast, today, tomorrow, whenever. Think about that. Who is the underdog in this race? And then the conviction obsession here. Uh, polling data, Joe Fleming and Associates for the two media entities, puts this question out about corruption conviction concerns. So half the male voters and 60% of the female voters are, yes, concerned about Buddy Sancy's convictions. Right? You know, I, interesting, but no kidding. I would be concerned if people said, I'm not concerned about the convictions. And here's another piece of data which I think is interesting. Importance of the corruption conviction. Well, to the lawyers of voters, it's very important. To the Herod voters, you know, all two of them, it's very important. And Buddy Cianci's, you know, folks uh, kind of discount it, which makes some sense. Forty percent of the undecideds are also concerned about the conviction. Convictions. Just because you're concerned about the convictions doesn't mean that you're not going to vote for them. I think one of the interesting characteristics about this southern New England, Rhode Island, and Providence electorate is that uh, forgiveness is at a very high level. I don't think that data is as worrisome as some people are making it out to be for Buddy Cianci, which is my ultimate point. I don't think this race is won by any stretch, by the way. You know, a six-point differential is not that much to make up. 21% could go any way, and depending on who says what about Cianci that's new at the end, it could uh, change the dynamic. But no doubt, he's the favorite, while he might be the underdog. Okay. Whew. Next item. Really? Not much needs to be said here. You know, there's no law that requires the President of the United States to salute properly. In fact, there's no law that requires the President of the United States to salute at all. But uh, decorum would suggest that, Mr. President, perhaps you want to put your coffee in your left hand or leave it on the helicopter before you salute our nation's finest Marines that way. Is it the end of the world? No. But uh, to borrow my favorite phrase from the guys over at ESPN, Mr. President, Come on, man. And lastly, okay, so we record the program in late afternoon. The Yankees, at the time that we were recording the program, were down six runs in the eighth inning, which means they will be mathematically eliminated. Nine now it's nine to five. Oh, they're coming back. All right, Kev, thank you. My Red Sox fan over there. Um, I wrote this because there are five games left, and there are five out of the wild card, and they're about to be finished. But what I'm really trying to get after is I can't wait for the season to be over as a Yankee fan because I think I'm going to throw up over Derek Jeter. But if you're exhausted over Derek Jeter, uh, I can understand that. And by the way, it's politically correct to say enough is enough. And I really do think that Derek needs to think this thing through a little bit. Have you seen, we should pull it uh, for maybe tomorrow, have you seen the uh, Gatorade uh, goodbye? You'd think he was the Pope, for crying out loud. All right, we come back. Dawson Hodgson. He's running for Attorney General. Stay with us. Welcome back in to my state of mind. Dawson Hodgson is my guest, and one of the conversations we're going to have here is about transparency with the Attorney General's office. Ed Fitzpatrick wrote a column recently. Uh, we've got a little graphic here. Of course, he's from the Providence Journal. After this headline, which is about a, a different story, Can Martin challenged on transparency. Actually, why don't we just leave that headline, and we'll go back to Ed's quote. We've had one of those days. Ever since I threw my back out this morning, the whole, the whole, the whole place has gotten kind of nuts. But uh, welcome. Good to see you. Great to be back. How's your back? You my feeling back's good? Great. You feeling doing Strong. a lot? Of, doing a lot of, carry, carrying a lot on it. Doing a lot of walking out there. Yes, sir. This concept of transparency. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're making a big deal about it. Well, it's a core function of the Office of Attorney General administering Rhode Island's open government laws, and we've seen an orientation away from transparency from this Attorney General across a pretty broad spectrum of those laws, um, and I've actually experienced uh, something more pernicious, which is a an abuse of power. Um, the Attorney General actually charged me ten times the amount he charged somebody else for the exact same public information. It's outrageous. I read about this. I read about it in the paper. I know ABC6 did a story on it. Um, 
Explain to me what happened with that particular case. You were looking for travel expense records for the Attorney General, yes? For the department. For the um, whole department. Correct, Dan. You know, after the Attorney General turned up on the Sarasota Evening News um, and there was a big deal made of whether he was a Rhode Island resident or uh, resided at his home in Florida, uh, apparently Channel 6 had requested the travel records for the entire department. Um, I had nothing to do with that. I was focused on the Senate, but when we began vetting Peter Kilmartin in July for our Attorney General campaign, I made the same request for the same, uh, the same information. And the Attorney General told me it would cost $3,300 and change. He said it would take 209 well, he hours didn't, to look. But his person did. His person did. Uh, right. But then I found out that uh, he charged, he quoted Channel 6, uh, $300 and change for the same information. Um, you do not get to select how you want to administer the open government laws. Uh, be be beyond if being I recall, a candidate, I'm a his citizen. response was, and I, I'm probably not the first person that's going to try to advocate or defend Peter Kilmartin. I've given him a pretty rough time. But if I, as I recall, he was saying the documentation you were looking for was more thorough than that which ABC6 was looking for, correct? Yeah, that's what he said, Dan, but just because Peter Kilmartin says it, we find out, does not mean it's true. Uh, in fact, if you were to read the two requests, while they use different language, the Channel 6 request is actually more, uh, more broad. Mine is more constrained. It just uses specific language. Um, the Attorney General's description of this distinction was totally nonsensical. I think people will understand that they're not being told the truth. Did you end up paying that money? Uh, I ended up um, having to settle for the Attorney General himself's travel records and limiting my request and not being able to access what the uh, travel practices were of the entire department. Are you quitting there or are you finding well, a way to try to get what well, you're looking for? Well, Dan, he wants $3,000 and that's, that's an awful lot of money and my constituents and my campaign supporters do not give me that money to go pay excessive amounts of money for information that belongs to the public in the first place. Um, you know, we see how he feels about process, we see how he feels about transparency, not just as towards me and the excessive estimates of search and retrieval fees, uh, which is an anecdotal experience a lot, a lot of people have trying to get records and is used as a barrier, but also um, if you read the Access RI report that evaluated uh, the implementation of the new Access to Public Records Act, the Attorney General is mandated to train municipal agencies on how to administer that and they have not been effective in doing so. It's been, it's been a failure. And what the report says is that this is a problem with culture. You're probably familiar with me hearing, uh, hearing me talk about culture because that is so integral to why I'm running for Attorney General, changing the political culture of this state for putting the people first. That's customer service. That's remembering who we work for. All right, so we had this quote that I was referring to, which I think came not from the headline that I, that I posted, but from a column that Ed Fitzpatrick had written. And he more or less is saying, hey, you know what? It's good to see that there's a full throw the de debate about open government. That, of course, um, would be between the Attorney General candidates here. What is it about open government that uh, in general, an easy to understand language you think is wanting here? Well, Dan, you know, it, it, it ranges from the administration of these laws and what I feel to be an anti-transparency um, orientation. And first, let me say, when Ed uses the word debate, we want to debate Peter Kilmartin. Uh, as many times as he will deign to do so, we want to talk about these issues face to face with him. Um, do you have any, do you have, I don't want to mean to digress here, but do you have any? He has agreed to one debate uh, at Channel 12, uh, and we are hopeful that he'll agree to uh, at least two more debates in other forums. We ask for five. Um, he has repeatedly told us he's still checking his schedule. Um, but when it comes to uh, the other aspects of transparency, it's not just administering the open government laws where he, I think, has been an abject failure, but also um, the transparency required with managing vast sums of settlement money. The Attorney General has had $60 million sum of money for the Google, uh, from the federal Google settlement for over two years, has told no one what his plans or intentions uh, are to use that money to fix justice and safety problems in this state. Um, the people deserve to see, you know, the status of those funds, the strategy for deploying them, and then the effectiveness when they are so deployed, but we don't get anything like that. And the very same concern has been brought to me by many community groups as it relates to the mortgage uh, foreclosure settlement fund. Um, they've talked to me, can, you know, Senator, can you do a public records request so we can see what that fund looks like because our organizations um, are totally kept in the dark okay. and we want to know what we're applying for, but he won't share it with us. Right. But everybody's afraid of retribution. That's a cultural problem in this state. Okay. You're on a roll. When we come back, I'll ask the, the Senator uh, how high he thinks the acumen of the voters is on this. I'm not so... I'm 
not so sure. Stay with us. All right, so open government and transparency uh, are, are very important. They tend, they tend to be wonky issues unless you're trying to get a record as a citizen, then all of a sudden you realize how the doors get slammed on you. How broad do you think that matter will be in this race, and how much are you willing to push it where the voters are kind of going, what's he talking about? Well, Dan, to a certain extent, that resides with the media. You know, the fourth estate probably has the greatest, um, aside from the general public, uh, has one of the greatest uh, stakes in administration of open government laws. You depend on uh, honest and forthright access to public information to do your job as a journalist, as do all your colleagues at this station and on the radio. Uh, and the newspaper. I would you, expect uh, the Providence okay. Journal to be leading the charge on making sure that they have a fair and transparent administration of are this you process. S are you saying that he hides information or is just lazy about it? Well, I, Dan, I think in, uh, in my case, I think what we saw is an experience a lot of Rhode Islanders have when they receive an inflated estimate of search and retrieval time for public documents. It's used as a screen out. If you really want the information, maybe you'll try something else. Uh, but with my case, I saw a flat out abuse of power. Charging your political opponent ten times what you charge somebody else for the same information is just plain wrong. And, you know, I could file a complaint, but it would be with the Attorney General's office. So we're going to remove him from his office at the polls. Speaking of removing him from office, at least from a role or responsibility, I'm still aghast that he hasn't recused himself from the 38 Studios investigation to the point where nobody in his office uh, will feel compelled to have to report to him, that there should be a, a stop somewhere aside from him. He hasn't set himself aside. This whole Secretary of State flap where Ralph Mollis got involved in that whole deal uh, and started becoming his own sheriff with a lobby procedure. Uh, hasn't reached to Peter Kilmartin in terms of example of the mess that has been created here. Well, uh, but he's, he's managed to avoid it, but I still can't figure out why in God's name he hasn't stepped aside from that thing, which is hardly over at this Peter point. Peter Kilmartin is a conflicted, ineffective insider, and he puts Rhode Island at risk in this situation and in others across his jurisdiction. You're not suggesting that he did anything dirty with 38 Studios, are you? How would we know? I have no information to suggest that he did. But until we have somebody with an objective set of eyes, somebody who is not conflicted, uh, having voted on the proposal, somebody who did not work at the right hand of Gordon Fox as his majority whip when Gordon Fox was the majority leader, um, the last time I saw Gordon Fox as the Speaker of the House, he was walking into a political fundraiser with his arm around Peter Kilmartin, and they were both yucking it up. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. You can have friends. They served together for decades in the State House. But there's no way he can be the impartial uh, arbiter of what criminal conduct may or may not have taken place uh, under that under that watch. You know, I want you'll be back as many times as you need to be uh, prior to, to, to Election Day. But there's something about you today. You, you seem to be very up. You seem to be almost giddy. Dan, about about been... where you think you have Peter Kilmartin. I mean, that, that smile is... is is like hardly uh, containable. Well, Dan, what's, what's going on? Dan, if you've read any of the political coverage of our race for the past six months, you know, there have been two things that people have said. Well, nobody's going to pay attention until after the primary is over and he doesn't have enough money. Well, we, have, uh, rely we can reliably budget at least one quarter of a million dollars to get our message out between now and November 4th. And if I can't get a message of fixing Rhode Island's reputation and fixing our economy across the state for that amount of money, then I shouldn't be elected. And the second piece is, we knew nobody was going to pay attention until after the primary. And when the cloud of the primary moved, the sunshine came onto this race. And so we are going to be bringing up a series of very relevant and timely performance issues of Peter Kilmartin and what I believe is truly the vision, the leadership vision that can turn this state around and make the Attorney General's race the most important election on the ballot in Rhode Island. Well, the here. most important election on the ballot is Buddy Cianci's. This is a Cianci-centric media coverage thing. By Dan, the way, weigh in on that and tell me what you think about that candidacy. Uh, Dan, I'm running for Attorney General. If Buddy Cianci violates the law when I'm the Attorney General, I will have to put him in state prison. But until there's some evidence to suggest that, I'm running for Attorney General. I'm focusing on the record of Peter Kilmartin and how he has misserved the public in that office and my vision for actually restoring Rhode Island's reputation and integrity in government. You'll agree with me, though, that this has been a, a kind of a media soap opera with that race. The, the media drives the attention to the CNC campaign, and the media complains about the attention the CNC campaign receives. I'm running for Attorney General. My name is Dawson Hodgson. You can learn about me at DawsonHodgson.com. 
the race for attorney general and what we can do in this state if we win that office and fix Rhode Island's reputation can't be overstated. I need your support. Uh, we could raise more money. We can get this message on the air. And uh, we look forward to a successful campaign. He's on a roll, and I'm out of time. We'll see you soon. Uh, be right back for your state of mind. <laughs> I'm still kind of dazed and confused by that last segment. Uh, Dawson Hodgson seems like he knows something that we don't know about his chances in this attorney general's race. I think this Democrat, Peter Kim Martin, has a lot to answer for. Um, Mr. Kim Martin knows that I'm not a fan of how he's done business. And uh, we'll see whether or not you catch on to this one. Uh, it certainly is a very important race. Your state of mind, this is how you get in touch, 228-1886 is the voicemail number. You can email us, you can tweet and Facebook post as well. Here's a voicemail we just picked up. Providence Fire Department is endorsing Buddy Cianti, which I think is good news, especially now after this new thing about him going across over a, a fire truck that wasn't used in the gay parade. That's a, a Brett Smiley, I think, uh, trying to dig up bad things about Buddy Cianti. Because we love Buddy Cianci, and we wanted to win. All right, Bernie, thank you very much. More Cianci. It's all Cianci all the time. I'll see you on the radio tomorrow at noon until 3 on WPRO. That'd be 6.30 on your AM and 99.7 on your FM. And back here at 7.30 for my state of mind tomorrow. Bye.